Once we've built up the basis of the timber frame, of course the point is we can then do a lot of different things with it. So we could add tiles, maybe we could delete every second roof batten and then make it a sheet roof if we only needed to say have every 600 centers for the batten. We could add weatherboard cladding on the outside or we could add a brick veneer cladding on the outside. So in this case, we're going to represent this as a brick veneer, and we could also make this a timber frame floor or a concrete slab. So again, we're trying to leave the most amount of variety or possibility. Just so we're creating something that's consistent and simple, and then we can add options to it. So let's just do this with brick at the moment to explain how this would work. So we've already drawn that one brick, so let's bring it down the bottom. Now, it's a little bit uncertain at the moment how this brick relates to the wall because it depends on whether we're talking about a timber frame wall, timber frame floor, or a concrete slab. If this is a concrete slab, let's get concrete. I'll make this gray. We will typically be having something like a 100 millimeter thick slab as a minimum. It might be thicker, it might be 120, it might be 150. We could go less if it was a, a different type of structure, say a waffle pod slab. But if it was just a typical type of slab, we're probably about 100 mil. Now, in addition to that, we'd need a thickened edge. We'd normally call that a footing. And what that typically might mean is maybe that's 400 deep and 300 wide or it might be 450 400 600 400 it really depends on the circumstance the situation and i'd be leaving that to an engineer to decide but for now we're just going to show that as a simple representation now as a slab of course this needs to relate to the ground so where does the ground level sit Ideally, we don't want the ground level outside to be at the same level as our structural floor. So that might be 100 mil down, or it could potentially be 150 millimeters lower or thereabouts as a minimum. So for instance, if this wasn't a paved surface or a concrete surface, if this was just garden or uh, grass, and it wasn't very well drained and it wasn't draining away from the house, so it could contain water, we'd wanna have a decent gap there. So we're gonna represent it like that for now. Now we could be adding weatherboards to the outside of that, some type of cladding panel, or we could be adding brick. If we're adding brick, we need to extend this footing further out. So in this case, we're going to have, as before, I shouldn't, shouldn't have moved that brick away, we've got the 50 mil gap between the wall and the brick and then the 110 for the brick itself. So I can extend this this way 160 and I can therefore actually also extend this this way 160. Now that's sort of right but we don't want our brick to sit on a slab that's at the same level as our timber frame wall because we don't want moisture, water, coming hitting the brick and running inside. The brick is partly porous, water can get through, but the mortar joints between the brick is also quite porous. And that's gonna create a bit of a problem. So we're going to step our footing. We're going to step our footing down, generally based on a brick dimension. And so that could be one brick, and therefore it's the 76 plus 10, so 86 for mortar. Or it could be two bricks down, which would then take us below ground level. So therefore it might be another 86 millimeters down. And now we can see we're below that red line, so we're below ground level. In that case, we'll have our brick, we'll have a 10 mil gap, and then that 10 mil gap is going to be our mortar joint. So I'll just represent a fill and then I'll change how it's represented. So we're gonna change that to sand or render, doesn't really matter in terms of what I'm representing here. And we'll change the fill type. So I'll make that two and I'll make that white. Now I could change the way that this mortar joint works. So we could have this raked 
and flush on the back. I'm going to select those two, group them together, and then I can multiply by spread 86, and instantaneously I can have a wall of bricks. So drawing all of those bricks isn't hard, it, it took a second or two. But understanding how those, those bricks work, that's the, the challenging part. Now we need to allow, once we've got the water that's going to unfortunately come through the wall, we need the water to come out somewhere. So one of these bricks, at least, is going to need to change in its representation. So we're going to change that to be an empty fill. And then like we had an X on that timber, we're going to have an X on this brick. It's not a piece of timber, but we're going to call this the weep hole. And so we're going to allow water to come through, not actually the brick, but the perp end, so the, mortar, the vertical mortar joint on both sides of those bricks, or every few bricks is a better way of understanding that. Now we see that the work that we did to this footing has severely reduced the size or the structural strength of this footing, so I'm going to need to adjust this to make it a little bit stronger. So again, I'm going to make it 400 minimum from the bottom of here. It's a little bit narrow here, that's only 300 because it gets very thin there, so I'm going to add an extra 100, so it's now effectively a 400 by 400 footing at the brick, and it's now a almost 600 deep from here. And then I need, I need to make the edge here a little bit thicker as well. So I'll draw a line that's 100 millimeters this way, 100 millimeters that way, and therefore I'm going to chamfer this corner so I can get rid of those I'll move these nodes and then get rid of that line. And I've now created a, a stronger edge to that footing. So I've now got a footing. I've got my brick wall. I haven't really looked at how this brick relates to the timber frame, but at the moment the brick is stopping short of that rafter, which is important, so it's currently working. And we've got the start of a detail explaining how that brick veneer and concrete raft slab will work.